Welcome back to the Venom Workshop. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a Nibby Carb on the X20. Um, you'll notice that this X20 has already got the upgraded exhaust. So we're going to do some upgrades on this bike. This bike is going to be the upgrade bike. So I'm going to show you some little things that we can do. We can tweak it and the uh, things right away. Just that uh, with that exhaust on it, it's got much better flow. There's no restriction. It, uh, it sounds nicer but it's even gonna sound nicer once we get this Nibby Carb on. So to take and put the Nibby Carb on, I will be re removing both fairings, so both sides. Excuse me, uh, the reason I wanna do that is because it gives me a more open access look. When I put this carb in here, I don't want this carb to be angled. I don't want it to have an angle on it. No carb runs good at an angle. It should be running flush. It shouldn't be uh, sideways if it was uh, that kind of carb. There is carbs that you can buy like that. Absolutely, they'll run any way at all, but that's not the design of this. It's supposed to be a little bit different, so I'm gonna do it the right way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop the seat off. I see this in every video, but the seat lock is on the left-hand side of most motorcycles. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get that off. And I'll also show you what comes with the Nibby. Come over here. And we'll take a look. So, it'll come with a, an instruction manual like this. Uh, it's in Chinese, most likely. So, it'll be tough to follow. But uh, you don't really need to follow it so I'm going to show you how there should be an English section on the inside but I find uh, a lot of times when these come with these instructions sometimes it's very hard to read them um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just show you how to hook it up so here's our Nibby Carb this is the N26 uh, that's the one that's used for the 125 cc engines it's uh Got its own choke on the side there, right here. You have to manually choke this one. It's not gonna work from your handlebars anymore. You're gonna have to choke it yourself. Um, I'll show you how you can get to that choke so you can pop it up and down and uh, we'll get to that. Now this here is for your idle adjustment and you don't need a screwdriver anymore. You can uh, use the idle up and down. And this right here is your air screw, but you don't have to touch your air screw. It's already pretty well set. Uh, it just depends what the elevation is where you live, like Colorado places like that. It just depends. Um, but try not to mess with that unless you kind of know what you're doing. And uh, so let's get started. So up here, it's your air filter comes with it as well. Then you're going to have an intake. Excuse me. With two hose clamps on it and then this intake goes to your intake so that the front of the carb can mount up to it so let's get started uh, and there's gonna be a gasket in here and some hardware I think somewhere oh yes here so there's a hardware bag with gaskets things like that and most of them come with a jet kit it's already pre jetted but jets again are uh, it all depends sometimes what you like for uh, how your bike rides. So they do send an extra jet kit. So let's go ahead and like I said, we're gonna get started. Now I'm gonna be, like I said, I'm gonna be removing all the fairings um, and, I'll, and I'll show you why. So let's just get to it. So remove the fairings, it's pretty easy. You're gonna need a number 10 mil socket. And you're also gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. Bring a bolt tray or some sort of container or something to put your bolts in so you're not kicking them all over the place. So we'll put our bolt tray there. We'll go to the back here first. Right at the back here, at the top. I'm just gonna put my socket there. I wanna see what I'm talking about. It's gonna come up a bit. So right inside here, on this side, there's a screw here. We're gonna remove it. 
And like I said, we're gonna be doing the other side too. So we're gonna remove it. Uh, again, there's gonna be another 10 mil bolt there now. Right here. We're also going to remove two screws from here, one on each side. this bolt and the screws in the front there so but before we do that actually what we want to remove is this panel so this panel there's a little rubber tab on the inside you just have to pull it like that and then i just want you to lift it up and out of the way you don't have to take this back one off on either side but we want to remove this 10 mil right here Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna keep taking out our, our bolts. So that's it for 10 mil bolts. Now it's just gonna be Phillips screws. Right oh, of my life. There it is. All right. So now, sorry about that, my camera shut off for some reason. Uh, okay, so. actually are off so those two screws so now we have to come around the front here and there's going to be three screws all the way up here one two and three and that's going to be on both sides so everything i'm doing here i'm going to have to do on the other side the only thing different about the other side is we're going to let that fairing hang down but we're not going to take it right off <clears throat> And that's because it has the seat lock attached to it. And if I don't have to take that cable off, I'm not going to bother. But I do want to remove all these. Get these out of the way. Okay. So if we go over this side now. Right here. We're gonna take off the three screws again. One, two, three. So I'm gonna put all those in my tray. Okay, one up top. That, 
and we can come around. We get the two ones down here. that and up here okay so next what we're going to do is we're going to start taking uh, our number 10s off right here and right down here and then there's another one here but we have to remove this fairing first then we're just going to pop them bad boys off and we're going to start ripping down the seat we'll get the car off I'm just going to pop that off. Oh, new. There's a little tab right here in the front. It kind of pain in the head. Where it ran. So, let's, uh, let's pop that out. And right at the bottom here, there's another little screw on this side. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. On the other side, when I redid the muffler, the muffler kind of blocks where that screw goes, so I didn't put it on. It's right underneath here. And you can pop that up like that so we can get to our other ooh, get to our other 10 mil right underneath here so there's just this 10 mil right here a 10 mil right there and then both them fairings can be popped right off And now, when you're putting this new carb on, we are going to be getting rid of a few things on this bike. Um, we're going to be getting rid of the emission system. And... I'll show you how to do that. A lot of people say you need a welder and all this stuff. You, you don't really need a welder. Okay, so that's all of our bolts out. Now we can lift off our fairings. We're gonna go to the other side first. So I'm gonna lift this one off first. Uh, you just have to give it a slight pull, like that, and it pops out right to you. Now when you take your fairings and you're gonna put them down, please lay them down like this, just nice and gently and out of the way. It's, you wouldn't realize how easy it is and step on that when you're not paying attention. So you don't want to be crushing the fairings. Now, I'm going to show you when I'm talking about removing things. So this is going to be obliterated. It's going, it's going away. We don't need this here. We're not going to need that air box system anymore. Uh, the, the bike's going to run with its own air filter on a different carburetor. So I'm going to show you how to de delete that. We're also going to go around... To this side here i may leave the emissions on but I, i'm not too sure yet i want to take this panel off here again it's the same thing it's just a pop out the my tabs like that and let me see what's holding that back there oh and i missed another screw up on this side Breaking anything. This side here has one or two screws that the other side didn't have because of the way the muffler is set up. Take that 
that screw out. Now the spring I'm gonna pop off. Like I said, when I pop it off, I'm just gonna flip it like this. I'll show you what I mean, like that. And let it hang out of the way because I don't want it to get damaged, but I don't want to remove that cable if I don't have to. And this is the other side of the bike. Like I said, this is gonna get deleted. Um, so I'm not too worried about that, but I'm probably gonna take this hose and run it back this way and like this one from the air box here that way if i want i can keep my emission system i don't have to but i can so um if you live in a place like california or something like that and you want to change and still go to a different carb you still have the option you know what i mean to uh still run with your emission system uh still intact so what i'm going to do now is let's start removing all this stuff i'm going to start on the other side because uh, it's it's just got more a lot more light, but we're gonna just take out some bolts and, and get uh, cracking on that. So let's turn around to the other side. Let's go in there. Alrighty. So you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna need an eight mil socket. You're gonna probably need an eight mil wrench. Probably a ten mil wrench. You're going to probably need a set of snips. Snips are to get rid of zip ties because you're probably going to have to get rid of a few zip ties. You can always put them back on after. It's not that big a deal. Because um, we are going to be removing quite a large portion of stuff here. Basically, this whole front piece here is going to be gone. This is going to be gone and flipped around. We're going to run the carb the other way probably. Um, so let's just uh, take a look here. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the air off the carb right here. So that should be just a Phillips screw. Of course it is, but it's a long Phillips, or uh, longer. So I'm just going to get a longer screw here. Always come prepared. Like I'm going to loosen that a little bit more and hit it a little shot so it moves. There you go. Very nice. I think that clamp might actually be broken. So. So that clamp is actually broke on that carb. So we're gonna remove it all in one big piece, I guess. So first I'm gonna disconnect my choke cable. And this carb here, don't throw it away. It is still a good uh, PZ22 carb. There we go. So that's disconnected off there. Next, we're gonna take an eight mil and we're gonna undo the carb bolt right there. Usually after a few turns, you can just take it out with your fingers. And you're going to want to keep that bolt so we're going to need an 8mm socket to take out uh, the one for our air box which is up here 
and you're going to want to remove that from both sides. And then the air box will, should just pull down. Um, oh, there. Got it to turn a bit, so it should pop off in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take the other side off um, of the air box because I want it to come down. See if we can loosen this now. There we go. There we go. Now we're going to go to the other side because I want to disconnect some hoses. But I want you to see what I'm doing. So now there's an air hose here attached to the emission system and there's another hose here this is for the engine pressure so we're going to take this hose off right here yeah and remember i was telling you about snips you're going to want to snip the these zip ties And let's get that air box out of my way. And it's going to take a little wiggling. And it'll come right out. Now once we move that, we have a lot more room up in the front here to do different things. Like I said, this hose here, I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to take it and route it up through the top this way and there's two things you can do with it it, it, it what it does is it draws in air so that's why it was going into your air box so if you, as long as you leave it up underneath your tank here you should be good and it should just draw nice clean air but you can always put a filter on it you can buy filters to put on these and it's not a big deal it just sucks in it's the same with this relief line from the top of the engine I would probably, if this was my bike, I would put a, just a valve filter on this, a valve cover filter. So these two lines, as long as they're up like this, and that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna install this up because I am gonna keep the emission system. And the reason I wanna keep the emissions on it, and I wouldn't have to, but I, I want people in California to be able to use this carb too. Um, I'm not sure if it's just California. I know there's a few states, but I'm from Canada and we have to have emissions on everything here. So I would have to leave this on. I could remove it, but if I ever had a roadside inspection or something and they looked for it and it wasn't there, they would be pretty unsatisfied with me. So um, I'm gonna show you how to install it and keep it on the bike. If you were about to delete this and you wanted to get rid of this, you could, but you would have to block your intake line here. So there was no suckage here and you would have to cap this line off into the engine here. Um, and then you would be fine. But uh, other than that, that's what we have to, what we had to do. Now I'm gonna get my eight mil, because I wanna take out this one right here on the carb. We're gonna get rid of this carb right off of here. And I wanna take it off here too, but I can do that from the other side. But right now I need an eight mil. Extension. 
hang down there. Now I'm gonna take the intake off. And when I take the intake off, the whole carb's gonna come off. Now there's one thing you're gonna need to do when you put this on and it's important uh, just because this bike does not have that option and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we're just gonna take that out. I'm gonna go get exactly what I'm talking about because I wanna show you. It's a part that you can buy on Amazon for five, six bucks and it's worth it to have on there and I'm gonna show you what it is. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, my camera was a little off so I moved it over a little bit more. All I've done is taken this off uh, and, and pulled the emissions cloud, uh, piece off the side of the carb here and that's it, now this carb is hanging. Now I was saying that I had to get a part and there was a reason I wanted that part and I'm gonna show you right now what it is. We're gonna go over to this side. Now, you'll notice that the fuel line for this comes directly from the gas tank all the way down through the filter here and then it goes to a shutoff valve or a pepcock on the carburetor that's not really going to be very nice for us having to put a carb on there and i'm just going to grab the first snip but we have to put a, a new carb on there and how are we going to stop that gas flow you know what i mean so what i did was i just went over and grabbed an atv fuel pepcock you can order one of these on Amazon. They're about five bucks. Um, uh, five to seven bucks. They're cheap. They're, they're not expensive. And it can also be mounted. So we can mount it if we want. Or we can just leave it hanging. But we want to be able to shut that fuel off going to our carburetor. So this is how we're going to achieve that. So right up here is our, our fuel line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch it back here. I'm going to cut it just like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on there. Oops. And it's turned on, so I'm going to turn it off. There we go. And now I can let that kink go. I can push that all the way on there. It doesn't need a clamp. It's It's got a, a, a really good barb on it. Now this line here, <clears throat> I'm gonna pull it off because I wanna save that line too. And the best way to get these fuel lines off them sitting for a while, is put a pair of pliers on them, give them a little like that, and they should pop right off, just like that. Now we're gonna take that other end, we're gonna put it on the other end of our fuel pepcock like this, and then we've made a fuel pepcock for our carburetor. So now we can go ahead and get rid of this other carburetor. And we're gonna to wanna to use this intake. So we're just gonna take that intake off. And then we're gonna take the top off our carb. So to do that, you just unscrew it. And then there's a spring that's gonna come out with it. Just like that. And that's our fuel line, or our, sorry, our, our throttle cable. So then we're gonna take the overflow line from down at the bottom, and we're gonna disconnect this vacuum line right here, and just put it off to the side. And then we, our whole carb is off. Now, <clears throat> when we install our carb again, we're gonna be installing it a little bit differently. If I try to install it back the way it is right now, um, with this intake and putting it like this, it's not going to work because of um, the starter being in the way. So we're going to maneuver our intake around that way. We're going to install our carb in the front here and we're going to hook our air filter this way. Um, and that will give everything the way I want it to go on. And I want it, like I said, I want the carb to be straight. I don't want it to be sideways. Um, so I can go ahead and remove the needle valve from my old carb. Get that out of the way. 
and pop that off. There's our throttle cable. Again, don't throw your old car away just in case you ever need it. It is handy to have, um, so you don't want to throw it away. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to be putting our screws back in our intake. So we'll come back around this side and uh, we'll get ready to do that. Okay, so we're over on the other side. Um, we're going to put the intake on in a sec. I just want to show you a few things first. So when you're putting this intake together, so this part goes to this part, right? Now, when you squeeze that, I want you to take the clamps off at first. I want you to squeeze it until it clicks like that, until you hear that click. That means it's gone all the way in to where it's supposed to be, and it's flush on each side like that. But I don't do that, that being said, until the bolts are all the way in. And sometimes you might have to take an X-Acto knife and just shave a bit off because of the bolt. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to put our, like I said, our uh, manifold on first. Here. First things first, I'm going to put my intake on. Like that. on the other side of the machine. I'm just gonna go grab that. Or I can put it in on that side. There we go. And while I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. So we're ready to put our intake on. So I want to get my gasket first. There's two ways to put this gasket on. The big part is at the bottom, like that. Okay, we're gonna put our nuts on. Now when I tighten this, I'm gonna wanna try to force that out a bit, that nut, or that bolt right there, because I rem remember I gotta put that rubber on there and I wanna make that sure that snaps in nice and tight there. So we're gonna do that. Now, I've heard people say that they don't like doing it like this. They don't like doing it like that. It's not supposed to look like that. Obviously, it's not supposed to look like that. Uh, and it's obviously not supposed to go like that. You're doing a modification. Anytime you modify stuff, you're you're going to be... It's right in the name. You're modifying things. Um, and that's just, that's just life. That's the way. So, 
when we put our carb on then yeah that'll go on tight enough for the clamp to grab it and then once we get our carb on it's going to be like that but it's going to be straight and then our air filter is actually going to go out sideways there uh, that's the way I want it to go so uh, let's finish tightening this up so I need my 10 mil to do that which is on the other side of the bike of course I'm just gonna grab all my tools from this side because it's just why do I keep running back So these are both 10 mil, but if you notice on the back side of that is a lock nut. So as soon as that nut grabs in there, you don't need to use anything to hold it. It'll hold itself and then you can tighten it up. put our intake on like I said it it's gonna mush a little bit when you put it on there because the bolt that's all right we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our clamp on now before I tighten that clamp all I'm gonna do is push in on the rubber Make sure it's nice and tight or uh, nice and straight where I want it and then clamp it. Like that. Actually, I don't like the way my clamp is on there. And I would complain about this if I saw somebody else do it. So I'm going to put the clamp on straighter while I push the rubber on. There we go. Much better. There we go. Perfect. So now. We take our carburetor and our carburetor's got an overflow just like the other carburetor but when we put it on we're gonna run it through down this way instead like that make sure that clicks on there right yeah that's perfect and then like I said our air filter is gonna angle that way so oh I didn't put my clamp on before I put my clamp on So I'm going to loosen this. Um, do it again. There we go. There, and you push it until it clicks. Bring your band down close to the carb and tighten it up. Okay, that's perfect. Now, you had a vacuum line there that flows up to the charcoal box. That goes right there. Just like that. Now, this emission system is usually hooked up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up on the back of this. I just wanted to test fit everything, make sure it all test fit nice, but I'm gonna actually put this on the back side of this nut right here. Um, now I wanna take my air filter. I wanna make sure that it gives enough clearance. Should, it'll actually make the fairing run out just a little bit far, but not too, too bad. I might be able to turn it down so it doesn't affect it at all. Yeah, just like that. So that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, I still haven't put my throttle cable on or anything like that. Like right now, I'm just test fitting. 
I've never uh, installed a Nibby car before. I've done lots of Makunis. I've that's not true. I'm, I'm not installed a Makuni or a Nibby car on the X20. I've installed a lot of them, just not on this bike. And when I do something, I like to make sure it's the best way possible to do it before I tell you guys how to do it. Um, I'm uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to bikes. I don't like things sticking out and things like that. So I don't mind that exactly too too bad the way that's going. Um, like I said, I am going to put that back up on there in my emission system because I do want to have it on there if I can. So, uh, but that's not actually too too bad. I kind of like the way that looks. Even um, it's it's just like I said, it's a nice carb to begin with. You're not going to see it on this bike, uh, but there is something that you're going to have to do to start it. And that's to reach through the front. Now the front is not going to be blocked anymore because there's no air in there. So you just have to pull that up until it warms up. It usually takes about 30 seconds on the Nibby carb, 30, 40 seconds, and then click it down and that's it. And you'll only have to set your idle once. And the great thing about your idle is you can always go right in here and just turn it up with your fingers, just up and down. Okay, so let's uh, get that emission system back on there. And then we'll go ahead, we'll tighten everything up. We'll get our uh, our fairings back on. And that's, that's it. That's uh, pretty well the whole install. So I'm gonna just try to see if I can just take the nut off instead of the tip. And there we go, and I can. Let's see, I'm just gonna install it exactly where I had it before. And then what I'll do is this line here, I'll just zip tie up here. Like I said, it's just an ear line, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, perfect. And then like I said, I'll zip tie that. I can even zip tie it to here. As long as water is not gonna be blown up into it, um, you don't want to be riding this bike in the pouring rain anyway. It's, uh, it's just not a lot of fun to ride a bike in the pouring rain. Um, so, what I'm going to do next is we're going to put the top on the carb. I'm going to go around to the other side to do that, just because the throttle cable is already on the other side. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll set the top up and the throttle cable. We'll get the needle valve back in, and then we'll get uh, this project all buttoned up and uh, put back together. So. I want to get my throttle on though because I want to start it. I want to see what happens when we start it. Um, and let's go from there. And if you want, and you take a look there, I left just enough clearance, if you notice, for the fork in that air filter. Like so, go to the other side. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my cord on the There we go. Give me a quick moment. I'll get some light on the situation. There we go. Okay. So let's see what we have for throttle. Oh my goodness. So all you have to do with the nibby, it's the same as you did what we did with the other carb. We just unscrew the top. The spring is gonna come out. Now the needle valve isn't gonna come out because the, there's no cable on it, but if I put my hand down in there, I can grab it. Now you'll like this needle valve. They're massive. Uh, they're really nice though. The whole carb inside is nice and smooth. So what we're going to want to do is take our cable and run it through the top. Work that through. There we go. And our spring is going to be the same as before. We're going to have to push it all the way up. Grab your cable and your, uh, your spring like this. Pinch it between your finger. 
then you go ahead and hook your cable in like that and then uh that's it the throttle's uh, already on now you want to line up you remember that dial on the other side well that dial controls the idle uh, up and down and that notch is what that's for so you want this notch to face the other side of where that dial is and this line side to face this side where the guide is so let's uh see if we can get our uh, needle valve in there correctly There we go. And if it does go in there correctly, it should drop straight down like that. All right. So, yeah, no, that's sitting against down. That's not against down. That's got a good. I'm going to actually run that probably down and over that way. Like that. Okay. Um, now we don't have to worry about the choke cable you can actually tuck it up underneath and it's out of the way but we do need our fuel line and this is always handy too if you're ever gonna leave the bike for a long time this fuel valve just shut it off and you'll be able to reach in through the front because like I said there's gonna be no air filter here so we can turn on our gas and uh, let it sit I'm gonna let some gas flow into it and then let's start it up I didn't put the air filter on, so it might come flying off. Don't worry if it does. I just didn't mount it. Uh, maybe I will, though, so it just doesn't move around. Ah, never mind. I'm too excited. I want to strike this thing. Okay, so we got our choke up. Let's see what happens. And there's a reason I did it one like this in one take after we put the car on because I didn't want this to, to think I started it off camera. Okay, so I did pull my choke up. If you notice down here, I pulled that little knob up. That's important. Let's try it. It will run high like that with the choke on. So let's uh, let's get our uh, air filter on and let's start getting our bearings back on and uh, let's and uh, we'll, what, uh, something else we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the throttle cable because I have a lot of turn here before I get throttled and, uh, and we can take some of that out. And 
uh, let's get the, the air filter back on. Once we put the new air filter on, we can just start slapping this back together and then we're gonna take it for a test drive and see what it'll do. So it did go on nice. <clears throat> it is straight. <clears throat> I like I like when carbs are straight. I don't like when they're sideways or in a weird position that they're not supposed to be in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I really like the way that turned out. When I uh, look at it here down at the engine here, it's nice. I, I have nothing to worry about there. I got a little leak on here on the fuel line, but I'm gonna I'll cut that and I'll put it in brand new so it doesn't doesn't do that. Yeah, poor little fuel line. I'm just gonna shut my fuel off. Pop the line off. I'm gonna cut that so it fits on there tighter. There we go. Perfect. All right. Very nice. So now we can go ahead and get our air filter on there. So let's get our air filter on. And we can button up the, up the fairings. Now, <clears throat> you remember when I put the air filter on, I want it on there and kind of on enough that it just stays on. Well, I'm going to put my clamp on first. that now I should be able to turn yet yeah. I want to be able to turn my my wheel all the way in and I bet you I'm gonna see if that's an eight mil I hope it is no it's not I'm gonna grab a flat screwdriver and I'll be right back Okay, we're back. I got a flat screwdriver. I'm gonna put my light here too. Kinda, somehow. I can. Come on, you. There we go. Now, it should fit inside that fairing. I'm really hoping it does. Um, yeah, it should. If not, I'll turn it a little bit more. But that's uh, pretty well the way I should have it. Let's take a look. Put that back that way. Yeah, it'll pop out a little bit below the fairing. That's not gonna hurt anything ever, they'll go together nice. Nice. I might actually turn it like that. Wow, that's not bad at all. Okay, so I don't wanna put my light in there, obviously. Oh, that's something else I forgot to do. I wanna zip tie them lines now. So my vacuum line right here, I'm gonna zip tie it just up here. So it's sucking air, but it's sucking air from up here. All right. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna grab some zip ties and I'll be right back. All right, guys, let's get this buttoned up. Okay, so we're gonna move this over here. We're just gonna put a zip tie on it and we're not gonna zip tie it tight, just enough to hold it in place. If you zip tie it tight, then it won't be able to breathe and you want that to be able to breathe. So again, right there. We can actually slip that right under the fairing. We don't even need to cut it. So our emission system is perfectly fine. Uh, I brought another zip tie, and that's where the engine blow-off goes, which is right here. What I want to do is I want to leave it up. I'm just going to go ahead and, and zip tie it to this line here. And I'm not going to zip tie it tight, just enough to hold it. So I'm not cutting any restriction in this hose, which is my return line for my tank, and I'm not making any restriction on the pressure line, and I can just push it up inside here. Everything's nice and tight. If you notice when I do stuff, I really like everything tight and nice 
and put back nice together. Uh, it just makes your bike look nice. It, and I, I'm something I'm really big into. I, I like my bikes to be nice. So I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna come up and we're gonna install our, uh, oops. Uh, we're gonna install our fairing back on the tank and we're gonna get our screws and everything put back in and let's get this job finished up. So we're gonna just swing this up. Our rear tail fairing is not even on there. It's just kind of sitting there. So you just have to bring this one back to where it belongs. There's two tabs on the inside. One, two, and they go into the two little tab marks, boop, boop, and snap in. So all you do is make sure everything else is lined up with that fairing. Put your two snaps and snap it in just like that, and it's on. So now, first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and put your screw in here. And it's just the normal uh, short screw and just kind of hold it in tight and we'll tighten that up. We can also go ahead and put our bolt in. Oops, I want to make sure that I'm lined up here with my other bottom fairing. He takes that screw, so there, I can put my bolt in there too, my 10 mil bolt. And that's a shorter 10 mil bolt. Now I just find my 10 mil socket and it would be uh, rocking and rolling. I'm not too sure how to do that. Just give me a moment to find my 10 mil socket and I'll be right back. That was quick, it was in my toolbox. Okay, so let's uh, put that 10 mil back. Now we can get our other 10 mils going here. And you can take your uh, ratchet now and just uh, when you're doing this and kind of tighten everything up. But I'm going to go ahead and start my. my Phillips screws that hold this panel here together. Oops. Right here. Yeah. Just have to get them lined up. There we go. Oh, I tweaked my camera a little bit. And here. Okay. And we can put in the rest of our screws. And they're just normal, our normal uh, Phillips head machine screw. Just keep going in the front here. And you'll notice that our air filter is not really pushing anything out or anything like that. It's uh it's just riding underneath the fairing. Like Okay, now 
we're gonna move to the back. We might as well put our uh, rear fairing. So this one right here, might as well put it into place. kind of lines up where it's supposed to be it's on there like that that snaps in there on that side like that. and then there's one screw that goes in on the bottom right there got uh, all of our fairing here now so this one long felt screw that you see right here it goes way up at the top there I'll show you it goes right up here so we're gonna put that one in next that and we can put our other 10 mil in right here. Just wanna make sure that's all snapped together correctly. Yep, there we go. Oh, here's my extension. Okay, don't over torque those because you will snap them. I don't want you to over torque, just be very careful you don't. So now we're going to come back around here. And when you're done doing this, you should have only two little bolts left. And that's the two little bolts that held on your air, uh, your air uh, box. Okay, just rotate that around that way. And now we can get our other fairing, pop it on. This fairing has to be lifted up just to put it on and bolt it on there. So let's get it. And then after we're done doing all of this, we're going to take it for a test drive. So, put my wrench down for a minute. Again, there's two tabs. We want to line those two tabs up here and here. And then just push on. Like that. And there we go. And it snapped into place. Now it goes inside there. And then we can put all our screws on. Okay. So now I can start with my two screws in the front. My gifts and my screwdriver is of course on the other side. Okay. So. First we'll put our two screws in our vent. All I have to do is just push the back toward them from underneath. Same with that one. Okay. And we can put the other one up too. The one up here. Okay. Now we can go up to the front ones. Put those ones in. Okay, 
which one down here. One up here. Now we can get our back one. For our back one, there should be uh, one that goes in right here. That's a 10 mil, so we're gonna put that one in first. one down back down snap it into place and then put our bolts I do, do think I forgot to put one over here so I can know down way at the bottom no I did not oh okay never mind okay so I have to put my 10 mil in right here as soon as that all goes in correctly oh it's not snapped in on the rubber thing yet There we go. So it's not sucked in. Put in there here. And now we can put our last long screw. We just have one bolt left, and that bolt is for right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put that bolt in. I'm gonna set up the camera over by the warehouse, sir, so you can see me, and I'm gonna take it for a test drive. Nice, tight, everything's good. All of our bolts and screws are installed, and that's it. We can install them in every pair. So just give me a moment to uh, clean up some tools, move some stuff around, put my seat back on, and uh, I will be right back. Okay, so this is our X20. We've just installed the Nibby Carb. Man, it looks sick on there. Look at that. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? I give clearance enough for both fairing and fork. The carb is straight. It's the way it's supposed to be. You have lots of access now to get in here, to look around, if you need to do anything. Man, that's a nice carb. So we're gonna fire up now. We're gonna take a, a quick, um, there's one thing I don't like. I don't like that fuel drain off valve or line running like that. I don't really want it running in front of the, in front of the muffler badly either, but it's not, it's just an overflow line, so. But if I was, it was me, probably I would run a, a, probably a coil over the top of it like that. But uh, hey, let's, uh, like I said, let's take it for a test drive. So it's warmed up. We warmed it up a few minutes ago. Let's fire it up and watch what, how it happens. Watch this. The difference in the way this starts is unbelievable.
is how you install the Nibby Carve on an X20 or an X21. I hope you enjoyed the video.